Hello there, friends and RC family. My name is Alec from High Noon Hobbies, and today we are doing the build and first drive of the RC Speedy R2 Moon Buggy Chassis. If you are new to the channel, I very much appreciate you checking it out. I hope you will stick around, watch at least this video, see if this content seems worth your while, and consider subscribing so that then I can say to you, if you aren't new here, welcome back to yet another Friday upload. So you've been subscribing to every RC tube chassis Facebook group that exists and just stalking all the posts. You catch yourself salivating every time you see a tube chassis pop up in your Instagram feed. You just stop and you, you can't help it. Uh, and maybe you even have a friend or two who have picked up a tube chassis for themselves and you can't you can't help but stop and stare every time you see them hitting a cool line. I think it's time my friend, it's probably time to get yourself into an RC tube chassis. But what are the options for RC tube chassis? <laughs> well, my friend, there are many, many options out there. In fact, far too many options out there for me to go through in just one Friday upload. But it just so happens that I have one of those options here in the High Noon Hobby Garage for us to check out today. The RC Speedy R2 Moon Buggy Chassis is available now on the RC Speedy Fab website for starting around $299, so under $300, and it is a killer drop-in conversion kit for an Axial Capra. In fact, you can convert your Axial Capra with very little effort required. You can also customize your own build on the RC Speedy Fab website, including fitment for a variety of of different skid plates including the UC Fab, the uh, Vader skid plate, even the stock 10-2 skid plate for the three gear transmission. You can also change it up for a variety of different uh, fitment for a variety of different transmissions including the Vanquish three gear with Hertz dig option and numerous other options including chalk mounting positions, uh, scale accessories, and even anodization. As with all other RC Speedy products that I've seen so far, you can also also upgrade from the stainless steel tube chassis that comes stock to a titanium chassis for a little bit of added durability as well as an additional charge. The assembly itself was relatively simple. I mean, if a guy like me can pull off the assembly of this uh, rig in roughly 30 minutes, that means your average competent individual can probably get this done in between 15 and 25. All kidding aside, I did have a small issue getting the 3D printed flat skid to fit that I typically use in the regular Axial Capra build that I was running until converting it over to this kit. Uh, I did have to take the top the upper link mount screws the m3 screws that i use to mount the upper links i had to take those screws out and actually insert them from the inside of the skid to allow for just a few millimeters of extra clearance and that's all it took to get the flat skid to fit into this tube chassis uh, that is something to be of note though that if you are going to use these thingiverse flat skids that you may have to do just a little bit of tweaking to get it to fit into this tube chassis. Good luck bending the tube chassis to fit around the skid like you do with the normal Capra. That's just absolutely not going to work when it's made out of stainless steel or especially titanium. Other than that, my stock Spectrum and Amazon servo wielding Capra tube chassis monster was ready to hit the rocks without too much fuss whatsoever. It was really just pop the skid out, pop the shocks off of the Capra chassis, uh, a couple of wire clips to undo, a little bit of double-sided sticky tape to remove, and then from there it's all about just throwing that new or throwing that flat skid into your new chassis and making room for all of the rest of the goodies. 
Luckily, RC Speedy does include a little electronics tray towards the back of the tube chassis, which did help me a lot with getting everything mounted up there, but I was easily able to fit the Tekken brushed motor that I typically run, the Hobbywing 1080, a Spectrum 5 channel receiver, and all of the additional periphery that I had in the Capra into the R2 chassis without much of an issue whatsoever. I did try to run the Capra interior in the R2 chassis, and I will say it does not fit, and this was a bad idea. And then there was the first run. I took the RC Speedy R2 down to historic Black Rock near the Great Salt Lake Marina, which is not really much of a marina anymore whatsoever because the, the water, the water I think, is supposed to go into the marina. It doesn't do that anymore. <laughs> but I took it down there before we headed down to Sand Hollow the following weekend for the Sand Hollow Slut Crawlers Takeover, which watch out for uh, the uh, the high noon footage of that entire trip coming next week. Uh, but I did end up having some issues on this first little shakedown. The first issue was related to the 3D printed flat skid. Again, you see the flat skid actually raises the stock capper transmission just ever so slightly. Not really a big deal on the stock axial Capra, but the R2 has slightly tighter tolerances than the stock axial Capra. I didn't actually realize this issue was happening until I basically completely bound up trying to reverse on a steep incline because that... that suspension was loaded down and uh, it was just digging into that uh, that drive shaft but it wasn't a huge issue and that was something that I was actually able to fix just by taking some channel locks and just ever so slightly coercing that battery tray away from the drive shaft the second issue was purely related to my Budget preferences in electronics, shall we say. The Hobbywing 1080 isn't exactly the most impressive ESC that you can put in a rig, and it turns out that when you add between 100 to 150 grams of additional tube chassis on top of an already overloaded ESC that's running two crappy steering servos that are both uh, overvolting probably because they're under torque, what you get is is brownouts. This is just that's what you get. Uh, surprisingly, the Hobbywing 1080 never gave me a full power failure, uh, but it did seem to reach lipo cut off, cut off much sooner. So that suggested to me that it was just draining the batteries way too much. Those steering servos didn't have enough torque uh, to get the job done without just browning out the entire system. My solution to this was about as simple as my solution to the first problem, but a bit more expensive, unfortunately. I ended up swapping the front servo out for an RS700, which is a direct power servo from NSDRC. That eliminated one of my servos completely off of the 1080 circuit. And then I took the 35 kg Amazon servo that I had in the front, and I moved that to the rear. The reason that I put the 35 kg on the back as opposed to keeping the Spectrum stock servo was the 35 kg has much better torque rating than the Spectrum which means you will pull less voltage uh, trying to achieve the same torque as you would from the Spectrum. While I do plan to upgrade to a Hobbywing fusion system in this kit sooner rather than later uh, this setup the current setup did end up lasting me all weekend long down in Sand Hollow of thrashing on this thing which means in my book it has been approved by the RC gods. I'm thoroughly impressed. This tube chassis is affordable. It's easy to swap over. It's durable. It's proven itself to me at least in that extent. And it's definitely worth checking out if you are in the market for an RC tube chassis. Alrighty folks, that's all I've got for you this time. I hope that you enjoyed. If you did enjoy, don't forget to go ahead and give this video a like. And if you want to see more content like this every week, go ahead and subscribe to the High 
Kai Noon Hobby YouTube channel. I very much appreciate it, each and every one of you. If you have an idea for how I could improve these videos, or if you have a video idea of your own that you would like me to cover, go ahead and leave it in the comments section down below. I do try to read and respond to every single one of those comments. I have been a little bit behind lately, but I'm trying to catch up. There's just a lot of comments there, so I promise if I haven't responded to you in a couple days, doesn't mean I don't care about you. I do. I'm getting to you. Don't you worry. But uh, that's all I've got for you. Until next time, I hope you enjoy some scale trailing or maybe some hard lines, and we'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.